Writing for a youth audience is a great place to be. I just, I love doing it and there are, there's, a, there's a pretty big appetite for it. There is a big appetite among readers, both young and old, for the Land of Elion books, which tell of the adventures of a young woman named Alexa in the fantasy world of Elion. And although Elion may be far away, the weaver of these tales lives no further than Walla Walla. His name is Patrick Carmen. Patrick has a business background. He's run an ad agency, a board game company, and a dot-com business. His transition into storyteller began when he created stories to share with his young daughters. Those stories are now the basis of his book trilogy. Book one is titled, The Dark Hills Divide. Uh, the Dark Hills Divide, which is a story that I started out telling my kids, is all about this girl who lives inside a walled kingdom. So you gotta imagine a place where there are big, tall, towering walls, and there are towns and roads, but it's all walled in. And this girl, at 12 years old, has never gone outside of that area. And the walls are there for a reason. If you read the story, you'll find out why they were built there. But basically, the people inside are afraid of what's outside. And so this girl, she's not like that. She just wants to get out and see what's out there so bad when the story begins that she starts sneaking around. And she finds some clues, and she figures out a secret way to get out. And the story, really, the, the, the fun part of it is finding out what's out there, but also realizing partway through that what's really dangerous isn't outside, it's inside the walls. And that's sort of the twist that kind of drives the story. After writing the tales of Alexa in the land of Elion, Patrick used his entrepreneurial background and business sense to self-publish and market his books. To do it to make money I think is a pretty tough proposition. I hoped to break even. But I, I uh, finished all the parts of the book, got it ready to go. Printed, I printed about 10,000 copies and I just started going out and seeing schools and then I would contact the local bookstore and say, hey, I'm going to visit two or three schools. We're going to have a lot of kids come down here. Will you buy a couple boxes of books? And they would go in there and they buy books and I'd go show up for a signing and we started getting hundreds of kids showing up and that's when it really took off. While doing his book signings, Patrick attracted the attention of Scholastic, a global children's publishing company. Eventually, Patrick contracted with Scholastic for his Land of Elion books. Well, I always tell people, be careful what you wish for. Because <laughs> as soon as Scholastic bought the material, they, they really wanted to make a big splash with it. Scholastic wanted to send Patrick on a six-month promotional tour. However, Patrick and his wife, who had been a teacher, came up with an alternative. And we looked at each other and said, we, we just can't. There's no way I can be gone that much for my own kids. There's just no way. And so she was the one that said, I wonder if they'd let us take a bus and load the kids up, just home, school them in the bus, and just drive together. And uh, we did all the numbers on our own, and the, it actually turned out to be less money to do it that way, and we could see more schools and more bookstores. And so we put together a... 200 school, 60 bookstore, four month trip zigzagging all the way across America in a bus. And Scholastic, they loved the idea. And so they, they, they sort of wrapped the bus so that it would look like the book. So we drive down the road, it looks like the, the book. Couldn't hide from anybody. And uh, we did, we went for four months, visited. The kids loved it, they had a great time. They were, they were at the right age to enjoy it. I think if they were a little older, maybe they wouldn't have, but they, they had a great time. Another person on Patrick's team is artist Squire Broll, who Patrick enlisted to create a three-dimensional map of the land of Elion. Patrick had a lot of input on how the piece was, was finished and the overall look and feel of it. Um, but my, my background is in painting, and so it was actually very, very fun to work with him and develop kind of a natural patina of sorts over the landscape so that it felt kind of uh, inviting and historic in a way. Patrick brought the map on tour and displayed it during book signings. In his personal appearances during the tour, Patrick would speak about how much fun kids can have with reading and with writing. I go to schools a lot, and I probably talk to almost 100,000 kids live in person about how to create characters and all sorts of things. And I tell them, you know, creating characters can be a lot of fun. You know, come up with a name, draw what you think they might look like, and just start putting things down about how old they are, what they might act like, what are some of their quirks, what motivates them, that sort of thing. I've had kids I've said, lots of kids I've said to, who has come to me and said, I just hate reading. I said, I'll tell you what, you finish reading my book and I'll give them my email address and I'll say, when you're done, email me when you finish that book and I'll send you a poster, a signed poster, I'll send you something because I want to see that you can actually pull this off. And they're like, okay, cool. And so being able to just really impact kids who are, are having a hard time getting excited about reading is probably the best part of being an author. Kids are amazing. If it wasn't for me speaking, speaking to kids is what makes it possible, I think, because they have such great energy and they're so much fun. Definitely keeps me going. It's good to have something that keeps Patrick going when it comes to the business side of publishing and marketing his books. He doesn't even mind when editors make changes to his work. You know what? Editors know what they're doing. And if you're at a big, huge New York publishing company and your job is as an editor, you're doing that because you really know 
what should be going on in the story. And I've never had an editor, an editor tell me once, ever, an idea that I thought was a bad idea. And they always say, well, if you don't want to do it, it's okay, but you should think about doing this. And every time I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So really, editors really know what they're doing, and I think it's great, the changes that were made to my books. I never would have dreamed that telling a story to my kids would turn into you know, what it's turned into, millions of books and huge long tour and all this work. And in some ways, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. The, you know, the touring is pretty hard work and having to be away from your family sometimes is hard work and, and that part of it is okay, but I've never worked harder in my whole life. And so making it as an author is difficult and I feel very, very blessed to have been able to do well. We've been able to, I, I can call myself a full-time author now and it's, I, I, I recognize that that's a rare treat and I don't take it lightly. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.